Uh, here's an example of an HMI that we developed for an electric vehicle manufacturing company. Uh, we used a map uh, component from perspective and a custom tile set to show their plant floor with equipment on the plant floor and their production lines and robots and things. Um, as Mara talked about with navigation structure, this uh, map component sort of simplifies navigation throughout the application. We can take the user to a main screen here with the map, have their production model uh, following ISA 95 standards on the left, and uh, they can click and zoom to go anywhere in the map. So right now we're looking at the battery line, uh, line one on the top and line two here on the bottom. If I click on an item in the tree, it will zoom to that piece of equipment and uh, show us the status of that. We can go back to the feed. Um, we're pulling all of this information in from a custom tile set uh, we generated from CAD files. Uh, we could also, if we don't have CAD files for a, for a facility, we could go in and manually measure things or use something like LIDAR scanning to generate a map of the plant floor. Um, and then from there, we generate these polygon shapes to indicate status of various pieces of equipment and production lines. And operators can pull up on a screen whatever they want to look at at any given point. Uh, we can also save these views if we want to show these on screens on the plant floor or pull up uh, different views for different pieces of equipment that are outside of uh, the ISA 95 hierarchy here. Uh, you also see on the map here, we have this OEE uh, dashboard icon. Uh, this could include things like spark lines, tabular data, different labels or things. We just kept it simple for the demo here. This ties into all of the tags and ignition, which in this project we have a UDT developed for all of the equipment and components that we want to display on the map. So we can pull those tags in and automatically populate devices on the map as needed. In the PLCs, we also have add-on instructions to map all of the tags uh, from the PLC and IO devices into tags and ignition. So uh, doing some work up front to standardize all of that simplifies getting things onto the map. If we want to declutter the map, we can also turn things on and off. We can turn off the OEE dashboard icons with the click of a button. We can turn them back on. Uh, we could also turn on and off the polygons if we want. And if we have somebody looking at this, maybe a customer or an investor, somebody on a plant tour, who doesn't understand the intricacies and the process flow, we can also build process flow diagrams to show the flow of material through the process uh, with arrows indicating where things are going. And that will give somebody a visual representation while they're looking at the equipment, what they should be seeing as far as process flow is concerned. Uh, then on top of the map view, uh, we also have a, a dashboard set up so we can click into a dashboard view and we can click any of the items in the tree to pull data up for those. Um, this uses the built-in dashboard component in perspective. So we have some customized widgets that we have set up and we could build as many widgets as people need uh, to see on the plant floor. In this case, we have a box and whisker plot and then a couple bar charts. And we can also show the plant map uh, icon to show what piece of equipment that we're looking at. Um, in this case, we're showing production counts, uh, different states. So going along with OEE for downtime tracking um, and cycle time based on an hourly basis. And we can get as in-depth or simple as we want to get with these dashboards. So we'll see some cool examples here in a little bit of some more uh, detailed dashboards. And then uh, going back to the plant map, we can also, the benefit of the map is we can zoom in and out. Uh, we can see the status of uh, site area and line from the ISA 95 standard, or we can zoom in and you know look at a particular production line or particular pieces of equipment and we can layer text over the map to give somebody a visualization of what they're looking at so that's about all with the map let me go back to the slides uh, just a quick plug uh, at icc in september uh, corso systems is going to be participating in the build-a-thon going up against the barry weimiller design group we're really excited about this competition and being a part of it and excited to see uh, what, we, what we can do at the conference. For our HMI designs, we typically like to figure out what all of our users are for the system uh, because their needs are going to be different across the company. We typically focus on business users. So that would be like executives or folks in customer service or shipping and receiving that are not running the plant floor directly. 
Uh, we also like to focus on operators, the folks making things on the plant floor and interacting with the system the most, uh, as well as considering things like investors, customers, media, you know, people who may come through on a plant tour and want to see something interesting about your facility. For the business folks, the overall goal is they want to answer high-level questions quickly. So we're going to give them high-level KPIs like OEE, uh, total productivity and throughput, well, where are resources being lost. Uh, basically, they're going to want to know how do we stop the bleeding if things are going poorly. If we have a lot of downtime, how do we get rid of it and, and get more uptime, push more through the process and kind of keep the business running smoothly uh, without getting into the weeds. This works well with map scale views like we saw in this demo um, that provide a larger scale context for the process uh, because the business folks are typically from an ISA 95 perspective looking at site area and line. They're not necessarily concerned with what's happening in a particular workstation unless it is part of the you know, aggregate of what they're looking at as a whole. Uh, for operators, they're more focused on running the process on the plant floor, so they need to be able to run the process efficiently uh, and operate their equipment. So we're typically giving them real-time KPIs, and as Mara talked about, looking at alarms and process upsets, and they may also be looking at things like production schedules and what's coming down the pipe next to make sure they have the right raw material and product on the line to make what they need to make next. Uh, this is where things like some of the map views can work well to show line level and a lot of pieces of equipment in one spot, uh, as well as individual work cell HMIs, so panel views and you know, panel mounted PCs or things at the machine that they're looking at uh, to control the equipment. And they're looking for more of a localized context, uh, potentially area, but definitely at the line and cell level. Up here, we have a little bit more of a detailed OEE dashboard. Um, you can see more information on that on the link below here uh, from a Discover Gallery project from ICC 2021. And finally, we want to focus also on investors and customers, folks that are going to be on a plant tour of a large scale facility. They're not going to necessarily know what's going on in each piece of equipment and each production line. Um, so they're going to maybe want to see high level KPIs to understand are things going well or, or bad. Uh, they may need to see process flow diagrams like we looked at uh, to understand the flow of material through the process. And they may be you know, seeing a robot arm doing some welding or something and say, you know, what is that robot arm doing right now? And we can look at the screen to give them some context for that. Um, so that's where map scale views and, and line level HMIs can look good for them. Um, they may be interested in a particular work cell um, and can talk to operators about that. Uh, but typically we need to build context for th those users of the system because they don't have all of the context of the people who work there every day. Um, and in a lot of cases for that use case, uh, looks matter more. So they're not going to be wowed by a high performance HMI that's grayscale. They want to see colors and flashing lights and things. So you kind of have to balance across the board. You know, operators may really benefit from a high performance HMI that gives them context and exactly what they need to do to their to do their job. Uh, but that may not work for all users of the system.